Okay. Double angle identity. Double angle identity. So for this one right here, we're going to take what we did. And so isn't multiplication the same as just repeated addition? So 5 times 2 is the same as 5 plus 5, right? Okay, so now a double angle would be the same as kind of like what we did for today's warm-up. Instead of having S and T, I'm going to have S plus S or S minus S. So it's going to be 2 times the S value. So it's the same thing we did. The formula is slightly different because you're only going to put in one of the values for that and you're going to put it into the formula though each time. All right, so let's see. So here, here's the cosine of what we were talking about. So it's basically the cosine of A plus A. So when I normally did this, this is my A and B, but they're both the same thing. So it's A again. So I use my formula, the exact same formula, okay, and I just put in A for all my values. Okay, so it comes out like this. There's a couple different combinations of cosine. So we're, we're gonna go over these and you're gonna use the ones that is necessary or easiest. So when we get to this page, I'll show you here in a second. Uh, cosine changes into this one, this one, and that last one that we just had right here. Sine is just going to be this. This one's not going to change. Um, you can make it weird, but you know, don't do that. <coughs> Tangent, some identity for this one comes out here. So we have our formulas now. So this is the one that you're going to highlight, you know, draw happy faces around, you know, circle, you know, bubble, you know, do all that good stuff, right? What? Huh? Sphinx is what? Huh? Now, given cosine is 3 over 5 and sine is less than 0. So what does that mean? If sine is less than 0, sine has to be? negative. Very good. Sine has to be negative. So for this one right here, I'm going to go for theta because I have to find all three of these. Okay. For theta, for this one right here, I know x. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't awkward at all. So x is 3, r is 5, Y is four. four. Bless you. Thank you. Por qué? Why is four? Because, uh, three, four, three, five. three, four, five. It is a Pythagorean triple. So I will do the math for you because if it's going to be uh, for this one, if we're looking for the Y, it'd be three squared plus Y squared equals five squared. Nine plus Y squared, 25. Subtract y squared is 16 y equals plus or minus square root of 16 y is negative 4 so I'm gonna put that negative up in there so we get right there why was why was it negative again yeah because it says sine is going to be less than zero so numbers that are less than zero are negative Students that are less than zero are negative. All right. Anyway, all right, so we're going to try and find sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, and tan 2 theta. So just using these right here, this is all I need. Let's start with my sine 2 theta. Okay, let's back it up. Sine 2 theta right here is 2 sine A cosine A. If you notice, I'm just using thetas again because that's what is used here.
but it's whatever my angle is, it stays the same. So for this instance right here, it's going to be 2 sine. Now sine of theta is going to be what here? Negative 4 over cosine. That's a negative. My, my pen, you know, glitched a bit. I saw you write the R. Yes, you saw me write the R. So let me erase all of this so I could rewrite it. Because, uh, thanks. Two. Uh, there you go. Okay. So, how do we multiply fractions? Straight across. So what's on the bottom of this two? There's a one. It's over one. It's implied. Okay. So on top, I'm going to come up with what? Negative 24. Negative 24 over 25. And so for this one, this is going to be my... My sine 2 theta. Are you getting roasted today about your handwriting? Why is the M counts like every day? That's true. Yeah, why is the M counts like every day? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? It's all right. <laughs> I got some sleep. This is my Monday. I'm good. Okay, so now we still have to do the other ones. So we did the sine. Right? Now it's time for cosine. Okay, cosine. Wait, doesn't it say tangent? I know it does. <laughs> okay. But how often do I actually follow these notes? Okay. Okay. Number. So for this one, I'm going to find cosine of 2 theta. Okay, I'm going to back up a couple slides. Cosine. I have three different formulas for cosine because they've been manipulated to be different versions of itself. Now, I just choose which one I think is going to be easiest. Let's just If I didn't go through and do everything in my math already, if, if I didn't do everything, I probably would have just picked the easiest one. They gave me cosine in this problem, didn't they? Without doing any work, could I find cosine 2 theta? I could have just used this. Because the only thing that's required for this is just cosine, isn't it? And they gave me cosine, so I just need to plug it in. So at times, you really don't even have to do much work at all. Just plug it in to what they give you. So it's going to be, for the double angle of cosine, 2 cosine squared minus 1. Okay, so try to find the easiest, simplest one that you want to use. We said cosine was what? What was cosine? 3 over 5. 3 over 5? Yeah. Positive? 3 over 5 squared minus 1. What is the order of operation? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Right? Okay. So exponents will actually come before my multiplication. So let's square it first. So that means I have to square the top and the bottom, right? Yes. So it's going to be 2 times 9 over 25 minus 1. Now, so again with that multiplication, I multiply fractions straight across. So it's going to be 2 times 9, right? So it's going to be 18, 25 minus. Now, this one right here, I need common denominators, don't I? What's the common denominator going to be? 25. So I'm going to rewrite the 1 as what? 25. Very good. 25 over 25. 
25 over 25, right? Very good. So I'm going to end up with the final of negative 7 over 25 for my answer. That's the cosine, right? If you would have chose any of the other formulas, you would still come up with the same answer, but it might require you to do a little bit more work. All right, what's the last one I have to do? Tangent. So I'm going to have to do tangent. So let's take a look. So tangent to theta. So here it is right here. So tangent to theta is going to be 2 tangent over 1 minus tangent squared. Yes? No. Okay. So it's going to be 2 times. Now, my tangent is going to be what? Negative 4 over 3. Negative 4 over 3? No, it's 3 over negative 4. Wait, is it? Tangent is oh, yeah, y over x. I need a map. Negative 4 over 3. all over 1 minus negative 4 over 3 squared. Okay, I'm sorry. Keep trying it. We, we have vacant spots over here. I know, I already know that that's like the worst spot in this class. Then why do you sit people there? I try not to. That's why I keep trying to move people this way. But when you have a full class, there's only so many places people can go. You should just, the people who are like always absent, sit right there. Or the people that walk in late. Don't walk in late. Why are you looking at me? I and I still sit here. <laughs> that makes no that, sense. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You're always late, so. But I can't and, see. I know. Boo. <sighs> that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and do my math. I like math. All right, so on top, I'm going to get a negative 8 over 3. All over. So I'm going to start with this piece first. Positive 16 over 9, right? So it is a 16 over 9. And I'm going to put 9 over 9 on this side. That's the reason why I did my exponent first. I did this before I actually just brought down my 1. Because no, no matter what, it's going to be 1 minus whatever that is, right? But I want to do my exponent because I already know what my common denominator needs to be. So I just changed it to 9 over 9. With the 1, it should be very easy to be able to make up your common denominators all the time. So on the top... I'm going to have negative 8 over 3 negative over seven. negative what? Seven. Over 9. Now, fraction over fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to be negative 8 over 3 <laughs> times negative 9 over 7. Yep. Okay. Simplification. So the 9 and 3 will reduce. So it's going to be negative, negative makes it a positive. 3 and, 20, 3 and 8 is 24 over 7. Now, I know at this point right now most people have just like, what the hell? 
Sound, sound, sound like, uh, you know, King of the Hill. Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> okay. At this current moment right here, I, I'm, I'm going to make a concession to this. I know this is not nice. Okay, everyone has trouble with fractions and whatnot. So, as long as you're paying attention right now, over here, at this current moment right here, you're going to take your calculator and put this in the calculator. What? The only time this works is when it's all numbers, right? When it's all numbers. It's not going to work if you have a radical. Okay? It's not going to work if you have a radical. So I'm going to show you guys in the calculator right now. And I have a special trick for you if there is radical on a test. It only works if it's on a test, though. So, control divide. So it was two parentheses, control divide, negative four over th three, right? Over one minus parentheses, negative four over three. And right here, close it first and then square. Now, does your calculator look like mine? Yes. Please do it right now. Don't just sit there and be, you know, less than sign. It's a math insult. Because sign was negative? Don't be negative. All right, so does everyone have it like this? So hit enter. Positive 24 over 7. Ain't that what I got? Yeah. Now, if I have a radical, listen up, please. If I have a radical in there, it's going to give me a decimal. Does that have to be a radical or a degree? It doesn't matter either way. Yeah, because I don't say Yeah. So ra radian degrees only deals with angle measure. So if I'm putting like sine of 15, that's when it's going to change it. So sine 15 radian is, you know, a couple times around the circle, where sine 15 degrees is not even all the way around once. It's just like a little sliver. Okay? All right, so let's take a look. It's example one. I gave myself a couple extra slides for this. Okay, find the values of the six trigonomic functions. Actually, hold on. Let me look at this work real quick. I don't think I actually... Nope, yep, one and two. All right, find the six trigonomic functions of theta if cosine two theta equals four over five. So we have to do it like backwards? Backwards, yes. Okay, so now on this one here, it's going to change it up. So I'm, I start off with 2 theta, and I know a couple things. So I know that it's going to be in what quadrant here? Quadrant 2, right? Hopefully, you guys following along. Okay, so now I need to go back to my formula. So cosine 2 theta equals 4 over 5. Ah, no pen working. It used to work with my finger, it's not anymore. So cosine two theta. So I'm gonna have a couple different opportunities for this one here. So <laughs> Yeah, okay, that would that would help me out because it's only gonna give me a sine or a cosine, right? This one would give me a cosine, or I could solve for sine using this. Okay, so either way. I'm, I'm going to have to do a substitution. I'm going to use the same one. I use that one. So it's going to be 2 cosine squared minus 1. There we go. So it's going to be cosine 2 theta equals 2 cosine 
theta squared minus 1. Now, we have a numerical value. We have a numerical value for cosine 2 theta, right? So I'm going to turn this into an equation. I'm going to replace cosine 2 theta with what? 4 over 5, very good. So I'm going to replace it with 4 over 5 here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it over here. So now it's going to become 4 over 5 is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Now, the object of the game here is to try to solve for theta. Get theta by itself. Okay, we now changed it from a double angle here back to a single angle. These are doubles. This one's a single. 2 times theta is a double. I just want theta by itself. Okay, so that's the reason why I substituted this in. Does that make sense? Because I don't know what two numbers I had in the first place to eventually reduce to 4 over 5. So let's take a look. What's the first thing I'm going to do from here? I'm trying to solve. Add one to both sides, right? Add one. So when I'm adding over here on this side, how much am I adding? Five over five, right? Five over five because I need common denominator. So it's four over five plus five over five gives me nine over five equals two cosine squared theta. Now, what is that two doing to my cosine? Okay, it's multiplied by 2, right? It's multiplied by 2. So how do I undo a multiplication? I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So go ahead, do that. So if I divide by 2, it's the same as multiplying by 1 half, right? I'm dividing by 2 on both sides of this one right here. So now I have 9 over 10 is equal to cosine squared theta. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to square root both sides now. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's what's half of a half? Yeah, a quarter. A quarter, right? Yes. I just never like. It never hit. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Now, so we're square rooting both sides, right? So if I square root this, it's going to be the square root of 9 over square root of 10 is equal to uh, cosine right here. There's still a plus or minus here. Uh, cosine theta. Now, from here... From here, I need to actually try to clean this up, right? So I know rad, rad 9 just gives me 3. And this, I'm going to have to rationalize. But I know that cosine has to be what in quadrant 2 here? Has to be negative. So when I take the square root of both sides, it's a plus or minus at that point. So the plus or minus, because the cosine in quadrant 2 is negative, I'm going to get a negative 3 over rad 10 is equal to my cosine theta. Can I have a radical in the denominator? So I need to rationalize. Very good. So I'm going to rationalize. So multiply top and bottom by rad 10, right? So top and bottom by rad 10. So it's going to be negative 3 over rad 10 times rad 10 over rad 10. Yep, so I get negative 3 rad 10 over 10 is equal to the cosine of theta. So from here, from here, I have my x and my r. That's what I'm doing with this. 
I have my X and my R now. So that that's that's the basis of my six trig functions, right? Yeah. That's the basis. That's kind of what I need. So I have X is this, R is this. So let's take a look. So X equals negative three rad ten. R equals ten. Y is they sketched it without rationalizing it, just so you know, from this one right here. They sketched it before the rationalize. Okay, so now let's take a look. Negative three rad 10 squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. When I do this one right here, when I square a square root, that goes away, so it's just going to be 10. But then the negative 3, I have to square that also. So the negative 3 squared is going to give me 9 times. Yeah, there we go. So I get 90 equals 100, right? Okay, so minus 90. Y equals, uh, let me see, plus or minus square root of 10. Now, at this current moment right now, I need to look at it and say, hmm, I'm solving for y, but it said y was where? Quadrant 2, right? It was between 90 and 180. Yes, very good. Between 90 and 180, so that puts me quadrant 2. And in quadrant 2, the y values are positive. So this has to be a positive, uh, positive rad 10. So... My six trig functions come out to be, I already have cosine, so sine, sine theta is going to be rad 10 over 10, right? Yes? Okay. Tan theta. So it's going to be this over this, right? So it's going to be uh rad 10 over negative 3 rad 10 now on this one right here because they are same top and bottom right here i can cancel out my rad 10s right so this just gives me what negative 1 over 3. okay what's the next one Insert. So let me see. I have uh, cosecant. Cosecant is r over y. R over y. So my r was 10 over red 10. Rationalize. Which gives me 10 red 10 over 10 which is just red 10. Secant theta is r over x. It's going to be 10 over negative 3 red 10. Rationalize again. So I get negative rad 10 over 3 and cotangent. X over Y. My X was negative 3 rad 10 over rad 10. Negative 3. All right, now there is travel today, so please, 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 you know what, don't just sit there and stare awkwardly at me.